From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Tom Bates, Mr. Dollar. Oh, good morning, Mr. Bates. There's nothing like starting the day with a good fight. That is not my intention at all. Good. I was beginning to think you went around in a permanent state of belligerency. Only when I see a so-called insurance investigator out to frame an innocent girl. Anybody I know? Look, Dollar, will you be available at two this afternoon to interview Miss Parker? I've been available for two days. She's the one who hasn't been. She was in no condition to see anyone. However, Dr. Praley is releasing her in an hour, and she's going on home. All right. Tell her I'll see her at two. It won't be necessary to tell her. You'll go out there with me, and you'll talk to her in my presence. Like that, huh? You can take it or leave it. Oh, I'll take it, Mr. Bates. And you know something? I think I'll still be able to tag her. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Green Pass, Virginia, to the Home Office, Surety Mutual Insurance Limited, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the qui bono matter. Expense account continued. <laughs> Item 12, $1.80 for a late and leisurely breakfast in the hotel coffee shop. Leisurely because I had nothing to do but kill time. I'd covered every possible lead I could think of, and the result, zero. The simple facts of the case were that Dan Parker, the local county attorney, had returned unexpectedly from a business trip late at night, entered his darkened home, and had been shot to death as a prowler by his daughter, Luann. Coroner's verdict, accidental death. Amount of insurance, $100,000. Beneficiary, Luann Parker. Why don't you give up, Dollar? Admit you're wrong. Wrong about what? About thinking you've got a chance of beating Miss Parker out of her insurance money. Oh, so that's what I'm trying to do, huh? That's what your company pays you for, isn't it? To find some angle, some technicality that they can use to break the claim? No, they pay me for the unpleasantness of having to put up with bullheaded acting county attorneys, Mr. Bates. Sure. You'd a lot rather question that girl without me being around. Bates, I'd rather do anything without you being around. Well, the feeling is mutual. I just can't quite figure you. Usually, I get complete cooperation from the local prosecutor's office. But you've tried to block every move I've made here. I'm protecting Miss Parker's rights, that's all. Her rights haven't been challenged. I'm not out to get her. If I'm convinced that she's innocent and that her claim is legitimate, I'll report it that way. All the company wants is the facts. Look, I'm not hired as a claim breaker. And of course, you know that. You've dealt with insurance cases before. So I wonder what the real reason is for your attitude. Suppose you tell me. Well, you're in love with her, of course, and that itself could be the explanation. Or maybe it's only part of it. Meaning what? Maybe you know more about it than you've admitted. Maybe you know she's guilty and are trying to cover up for her. I know she's innocent, sir. Or uh, it's possible your motives are a little more selfish. Maybe she's covering up for you. What do you mean by that? <laughs> It's that old Latin phrase, qui bono, who benefits? Who gains through Parker's death? His daughter does, of course, she gets the insurance. But so do you, Bates. In what way? Well, you got Parker's job, didn't you? And along with it, the chance to run Sammy Drake out of town without Parker stopping you? And in the long run, if Luann marries you, you'll get a good part of the insurance. Are you accusing me of murder? No, just speculating. But it's an interesting possibility. Don't you think so? Any particular subjects I should avoid, Mr. Bates? Ask anything you want, as long as I'm here to advise her. Oh, hello, Tom. Luann, this is Mr. Dollar from the insurance company. How do you do, Miss Parker? Mr. Dollar, won't you come in? Thank you. I guess we'd better go in the study. Mary's clean in the living room. In here. Just sit down anywhere. How do you feel, Luann? Oh, I'm all right now. For a few days after it happened, I... I couldn't feel anything but horror, self-loathing. I wanted to kill myself. But the last two days, I've... Well, I've done a lot of thinking about what Daddy'd say if he was still here. 
He was a wonderful man, Mr. Dollar. Yes, the whole town seems to agree on that. I'd give my life gladly to change what happened. But it can't be changed. Daddy used to say, Luann, remorse is only self-pity in disguise. The future is a question mark. All you have is the present, so live it. He believed in those ideas, Mr. Dollar. And I'm going to try to live my life by those beliefs. Because I loved him very much. <clears throat> uh, Miss Parker, I have a few things I'd like to ask you in order to complete my report. Do you feel up to answering some questions? Yes, of course. Whatever you wish. I insisted, Luann, that I be present during this interview. Why, Tom? His job is to save money for the insurance company. He'll try to trip you up, lead you into saying things you don't mean, things that could be misinterpreted. Tom, that's ridiculous. I've nothing to hide. Of course, hon. But he'll make it seem as if you do. I'd say you're making it seem that way, and for no more reason than just a silly kind of suspicion. Luann. Mr. Dollar, would you rather talk to me alone? I think it would work out a little better that way. Tom, it's been nice to see you. I'm not leaving. Yes, you are leaving. Right now. Honey, you do... I said now. All right, Dollar. I guess you will. Phone me later, Tom. Sure, Luann. He's nice. He means well, but sometimes he can be an awful idiot. Oh, his actions are fairly normal. For a man in love. Or one who thinks he's in love. It usually adds up to the same thing. Cigarette, Miss Parker? Oh, thank you. Well, what is it you'd like to know, Mr. Dollar? First, let me tell you a few things. I've talked to quite a number of people during the last two days. They all worship you. In fact, only one person in the whole town said anything against you. And he's a man whose word on anything would be a little questionable. Sammy Drake, I suppose. Yes. Well, I don't know what he said, but I imagine he thought he was being honest. You see, Sammy's never understood me at all, and I guess I have given him a kind of a bad time. How do you mean? By pretending to take him seriously. Most people seem to think of me as a child, Mr. Dollar, but actually in my attitudes and awareness, I'm quite a lot older than my age. Of course. And I saw right through Sammy the first time I met him. He's just a silly little would-be tough, but he likes to think of himself as a smooth, wicked mobster type. So I pretended to go along with it, even put on an act of my own in return. And what do you think happened? You had another Tom Bates situation on your hands. Sure. Sammy took me seriously. Well, I didn't want any part of that, so of course I ran for cover. And he has never forgiven me. Well, I guess you can stand having one detractor, Miss Parker. You've got a big team on your side. I like people. I guess that's why they usually like me. I've had a wonderful life, Mr. Dollar. And I'm very grateful. Especially to Daddy. He did everything possible to make me happy. I think if I'd asked for the moon, he'd have tried to get it for me. There was one thing, though, that I understand you disagreed on. You mean my wanting to go to New York? That's right. I guess the only arguments we ever had was over that. If I'd only known how short a time he was going to be with me, I... Well, it didn't matter that much. I felt I was right that the only reason he was against the idea is because he still thought of me as a child. Parents usually do that. I know. And it just didn't matter enough to... to hurt him when he had so little time. But you can't go back. I wonder if you would try to go back for just a moment, Miss Parker, and tell me in your own words just what did happen that night. Well, Daddy had gone to Richmond on business... None of us expected him back that night. All right, go on. Well, Mary, she's our housekeeper. She went to bed early. I read till about 11, then I went to bed. And shortly after midnight, something woke me, a noise down on the terrace. I looked down from my window, and I saw sort of a dark shape slip across the terrace toward the back of the house. I was scared stiff. I'd heard prowlers outside twice before during the past month. Yes, the sheriff told me you didn't. Yes, well, I realized it was up to me because Mary would have just gone to pieces if I'd waked her. All I could think of was getting to the phone down at the bottom of the stairs. When I started out of my room, I could hear somebody fooling with the lock on the back door. And that's when I thought of the gun. Where was it? In the drawer of the night table besides my bed. Daddy'd put it there himself after the night I heard the prowler, but I'd almost forgotten it. All right. Then what did you do? Well, I took the gun, I went back out into the upstairs hall. All I had in mind even then was to go downstairs and get that phone. But when I reached the stairway, I heard someone moving down below, and 
I realized that whoever it was had already got in the house, that they were starting up the stairs. And I could see just a vague blur, dark shape against the shadows. I was petrified. I remember thinking he's probably got a gun. And w without even stopping to consider, I fired twice down the step. Yes, Miss Parker? I heard him fall. I knew I'd hit him. Mary screamed and came running out of her room. I found the switch and I turned on the lights. And then I saw what I'd done. It was Daddy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Parker. And I'm sorry it's necessary for you to go back over this. I'll be all right. There was one thing that wasn't brought up at the inquest. Your father apparently tried to make a phone call from the railroad station that night, and he told the agent all he was getting was a busy signal. Could he have been trying to call here? I don't know. I didn't know about it. Would he be likely to call you, coming in unexpectedly that way? Oh, he'd be more likely to call Jake Digley. Jake runs a taxi service here. Yes, I met him. Well, he might have tried that. But Jake was out at Sammy's place that night. Well, the reason I say that is because Daddy would have known that our phone is usually off the hook at night. Was it off that night? Well, I don't remember. Maybe Mary knows. One or the other of us was always taking it off because we had to go clear downstairs to answer it. Yes, Miss Luann? Oh, Mary, the night Daddy was killed, do you remember whether the phone was off the hook or not? Yes, Miss Luann, it was. I remember when I picked it up to phone the doctor. Well, I ain't sure if you left it off that night or I did, but it was off all right. Thank you, Mary. Yes, ma'am. Well, Mr. Dollar, what other questions do you have? None, as a matter of fact. I did have several more, but you've already answered them indirectly. Thanks for cooperating. You're quite a girl, Miss Parker. Oh, yes, I'm quite a girl. A girl who killed her own father. Goodbye, Mr. Dollar. I meant exactly what I said to her. One way or another, she was quite a girl. Either she was one of the sweetest, bravest, and most honest kids I'd ever met, or she was one of the smartest, coolest little murderesses who ever walked the face of the earth. And I was very much afraid that I'd never be quite sure which. Now, here's our star to tell you about the final intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, one slip of fate, then the avalanche, and a wind-up that'll raise the hair on the back of your neck. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>